All the time, people tell me, Zach, I don't want people showing up at my house. Or, every time someone says they're coming, they never show. Or, I don't have time to deal with people. I don't want my time wasted. All of these complaints encourage me to make this video detailing how I minimize time spent wasted and deal with only serious buyers. I sell a wide range of items both for myself and others on Facebook Marketplace, eBay, and Craigslist. RIP Craigslist because Facebook basically killed it for local sales. I have been doing it for more than 15 years and I am an expert in this field. Let's discuss pros and cons of each platform and what I use each for. Facebook Marketplace has widely replaced Craigslist as the best way to sell large items locally, like cars, ATVs, motorcycles, heavy equipment, etc. eBay is my go-to for selling items that have less appeal for people in your local radius. For example, there are probably hundreds of people interested in buying a Suzuki King Quad in a small radius to my location. But there are very few, if any, people interested in buying the air box off of that same quad. This applies to bigger things too. There are very few people in my local radius interested in a 1980s airport baggage tractor, yet there are tons of people interested in a 2003 BMW 330xi. eBay generally brings a serious buyer with very few wasted time transactions. Facebook Marketplace and formerly Craigslist brings many more scams, tire kickers, time wasters, and lonely people looking for someone to talk to. But the great thing about Marketplace is there are no fees, yet, for local sales. For all platforms, I generally follow the same form for posting an ad. I first will do some market research and see the valuation of the item I am trying to sell. Next, I will analyze what these items are listed for. On eBay, I can filter out sold items and analyze what they are actually selling for. After I have determined a market value for the item, I will type up a brief but thorough and honest description of the item. When I am ready to post on Facebook Marketplace, I will type up the header with the first words, read ad, because this is the first thing that the majority of Facebook users don't do. Nine out of 10 messages I receive are the automated message, is this available? So in the first line of the ad, I write add up equals item available, followed by the body of my description. You still will have the majority of people sending this automated message, and although it is annoying, I try and deal with it because some people are too stupid to know how to just send a message asking things they want to know about the item. Some people who are smart enough to know how to ask questions only ask you questions that you already answered in the description. Some of these people don't even know that there is a description. Some have experienced a glitch on Facebook where the description doesn't show, or are just generally too unintelligent to think their question is already answered there. I always try and be as honest as possible when listing an item describing any defects or things buyers might be upset about if they weren't mentioned. For example, the running condition of a motorcycle or the known cosmetic defects with a piece of furniture. At the end of the ad, I write a line regarding the best way to contact me for more details. I will write something like, serious buyers send their telephone number for a return phone call. All others will be ignored. Generally, I buy as much as I sell, and a serious buyer will always be willing to get on the phone and discuss their intentions and ask questions to find out more details and schedule a viewing. I absolutely will not text if I haven't spoken to the buyer on the phone first. I will never schedule a showing unless I speak to the buyer first. This is by far the most critical step to not having your time squandered by people endlessly scrolling Facebook Marketplace, dreaming about things that they aren't actually going to buy. I also will not provide a pickup address until speaking with the buyer on the phone. One of the biggest complaints I hear from inexperienced sellers is, I have a problem with buyers not showing up. It is easy to avoid this problem by putting a voice to the messages. You can immediately tell when speaking to someone if they are serious about purchasing the item, if they have to ask their wife for permission, or if you are just straight up dealing with a child or a scammer. I will under no circumstances ever deliver or meet a buyer somewhere to sell them an item 
unless the item and delivery are paid for in full first. Once you and your buyer have spoken on the phone, it is easy to discuss pickup logistics and schedule a showing. Honesty is key to having a positive, mutually beneficial buying and selling experience. Pricing and sale negotiation are critical elements in making a sale. This is best done in person or on the phone. Buyers generally want to feel like they are getting a deal. Listing something with a firm price is generally difficult to deal with unless the item is in super high demand. Pricing something too high can scare away potential buyers, while pricing something too low will flood your inbox with a frenzy of Facebook messages. Many just asking, is this available? Fuck my life. Usually, I will price items with the goal to accept 75% of full asking price. This widely fluctuates depending upon condition, value of the item, how long it has been advertised, and how much interest there is in it. Most buyers will contact you just sending a number that is half or less of the asking price. I don't ever get offended by offers, but I will sometimes send a sarcastic response. Politeness goes a long way during negotiation, and seeing a polite message usually will make me more inclined to work more with the buyer on the price. Red flags to be aware of when selling. It is easy to see the Facebook profile of the person selling or looking to buy. If their profile is very recent or doesn't look legitimate, this is something to be wary of. Conversely, there are a lot of people, mostly older people, with Facebook accounts with no profile photo or no friends, messaging to buy your item. It is easy to tell if this is a legitimate person or not by using the aforementioned method of speaking with them on the phone. I frequently also see people using others' accounts to buy items, like their wives or, more bizarre, their children's Facebook profiles. In conclusion, the takeaway from this video is only talk to buyers on the actual phone. Go figure, using a phone for its intended purpose. Be as honest, thorough, and realistic with the condition and pricing as you can. Don't waste too much time responding to automated messages and talking to people who are just lonely and want someone to talk to. Pause the video here to see an example of what I would consider a perfect Facebook Marketplace listing. That concludes this video. Be on the lookout for future videos about tips with buying and selling, or videos about selling equipment long distance and on eBay. You can help support my channel by giving me a thumbs up or checking out my other videos. What are some ways you deal with buying or selling on Facebook Marketplace? Leave a comment below. Please feel free to check out my other content, and if you want, subscribe. See you in the next video.